Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Edna Zer. And I'm Bo Leung. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. ICC head defense graft bodies handling of cases involving top officials. Dozens injured when coaches collide head-on in Deepwater Bay. Transport panel chairman suggests changing basic law so mainland customs can operate at Express Rail Station. The head of the ICAC has defended the anti-graft body's decision not to proceed with some cases involving top officials. Commissioner Simon Pei wouldn't even comment on cases involving Chief Executive Leng Cheng Ying or Development Chief Paul Chan. Arthur Okiola reports. Development Secretary Paul Chan was headline news when it was discovered that three plots of farmland belonging to his family were on the site of the government's Northeast New Territories Newtown Development Plan. That meant his family could stand to make a profit when selling the plots to make way for the project. The ICAC investigated the matter, but after a two-year investigation, decided to drop the case. The head of the graft-busting body was quizzed about the decision today, but was not willing to talk about it. The um, director of public prosecution has issued a statement on this. I have uh, nothing to add. He had just as much to say on reports that the commission has not yet taken a statement from a complainant in the case involving Chief Executive Lung Chen Yang and the $50 million payment he received from Australian firm UGL following the sale of a former company. I think uh, this is um, uh, the, uh, the gentleman's uh, personal perception. Uh, actually, we cannot comment on the, uh, uh, the progress of any investigation. Um, so um, we just cannot comment on that. Lung says the money was to stop him from joining or starting a rival firm, a claim UGL backs up. At the same time, the Graf watchdog is only just this year completed a probe launch three years ago into Lung's predecessor, Donald Zhang was accused of receiving favors from rich tycoon friends. The government is expected to make a decision soon on whether it will prosecute Tsang, but Justice Secretary Rimsky Yun shot down suggestions it is trying to protect him. Pei defended the ICAC's handling of cases involving top officials, pointing out how long it took to successfully prosecute former Chief Secretary Raphael Hoy was jailed for seven and a half years after receiving eight and a half million dollars to act as the eyes and ears in government for property tycoon Thomas Kwok. Some investigations uh, take a longer time and uh, in fact uh, uh, the case in court uh, uh, in the latter half of last year uh, from we opened the file to prosecution it took about six years. Uh, so actually, uh, you can see for that case um, that was um, tried in court for, I think, uh, 133 days in court. And you know the details. Uh, there are a lot of uh, work we need to, to, to do, and that takes time. Pei doesn't think the length of time to tackle these cases will damage Hong Kong's relatively clean reputation. Arthur Akiola, ATV News. More than 50 people were injured in a three-vehicle pileup in Deepwater Bay this afternoon. Firefighters had difficulty reaching the injured passengers due to the traffic jam caused by the crash. The accident happened at around 3 o'clock this afternoon. Police said a coach driver lost control of his vehicle and crashed into another tour bus, which slammed into a dump truck on Island Road near Sivu Promenade. 53 people, 30 men and 23 women and mostly passengers on the two coaches were injured. Many of the victims got off the buses and waited along the road for paramedics. Some of them were treated at the scene before being taken away to hospital. Rescuers said they had problems reaching the site. We found uh, the traffic was congested seriously, so that our reinforcing ambulances and fire engines have to use another route, uh, say uh, use the um, Namfeng Road to have a longer traveling time to arrive the scene. 
actually uh, we have um, removed all the 53 casualties to different hospitals such as the Queen Mary Hospital, the Rutenchi Hospital and the uh, Youth Hospital at Eastern Area. Police are investigating the cause of the accident. Lechko Transport Panel Chairman Michael Tian says the government should consider changing the basic law to allow mainland customs to operate here for the express railway to Guangzhou. But he admits it's a controversial idea that may spark protests, and some pan Democrat lawmakers agree. Vicky Wan reports. Chairman of Lechko's Transport Panel Michael Tian says he thinks plans for joint immigration checkpoints in the Hong Kong section of the express railway to Guangzhou could end up facing a judicial review. Speaking on the radio this morning, Tian suggested the government may consider adding national law into an annex of the basic law to avoid any legal challenges. Currently, the mini constitution forbids mainland laws from being applied in Hong Kong. Tian brushed aside any legal aspects of the move and said the only problem would be the political impact, as it may trigger protests. NX released national laws that can be applied locally, and Article 18 says the National People's Congress Standing Committee can add or delete them after consulting the Basic Law Committee and Hong Kong government. But Democratic Party's James To insists Tian's suggestion is not feasible. He says the national laws in Annex 3 are limited to those related to defense, foreign affairs and other matters outside the scope of Hong Kong's autonomy. So adding any subtle law enforcement, such as at a border crossing, would be controversial and set a bad example. Critics say confusion about how the checkpoint will work may end up further delaying the railway which has already had its opening pushed back to 2017. Earlier, Tian estimated that the cost of the high-speed rail link could swell up to 19 billion Hong Kong dollars, 40 percent more than the original estimate of 65 billion dollars, due to delays. Vicky Wen, ATV News. Health Secretary Ko Ing-man has agreed with criticism that cooked food hawker bazaars with high vacancy rates should be redeveloped, but says the process must be carefully thought out. This comes after the Audit Commission report complained that the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department failed to use the land effectively. The Food and Environmental Hygiene Department was slammed in last month's Audit Commission report for failing to make the best use of land set aside for cooked food hawker bazaars. The report noted the high vacancy rates at 11 bazaars, where an average of 61% of the stores were vacant. Of the 144 vacant stores in these bazaars, 79% of them had been vacant for more than 10 years. Meanwhile, at nine cooked food markets on temporary sites, the vacancy rate was 57 percent over the past 30 to 42 years. Speaking at the Public Accounts Committee meeting this morning, Civic Party lawmaker Alan Leung suggested the government consolidate some sites to free up land for other purposes. Other lawmakers urged the government to improve facilities at the bazaars to attract tourists. Health Chief Koeng Man said he agrees that vacant sites should be redeveloped, but said there are several factors which the government needs to consider first. Ko said in the past 10 years, the FEHD has closed down three cooked food bazaars and an inclusive approach must be adopted. He explained most of the operators are from low-income households and the department tries not to evict them because it may be seen as controversial and lead to animosity towards the government. Co added there may be resistance and disputes with hawkers if they are forced out, as they may not be familiar with other locations. FEHD Director Vivian Lau said planning needs to be done before making any move, adding that her department is speeding up the reviewing of sites. Thirteen mainland visitors have been arrested on suspicion of being involved in parallel goods trading. The suspects were detained during a joint operation by police and immigration officers targeting illegal immigrants. It's believed those arrested engaged in parallel trading of milk powder, food, skincare products and daily necessities. 
Overseas, hundreds of migrants believed to be from Myanmar and Bangladesh have been rescued in waters off Indonesia. But first, there have been protests in the Philippines against reclamation work being carried out by Beijing in the South China Sea. Arthur Okiola reports. About two dozen Filipino activists marched to the Chinese consulate in the capital Manila to protest reclamation work in the disputed South China Sea. The demonstrators argue the work being carried out by Beijing is destroying the ecosystem there, as well as driving away fishermen who depend on the area to make a living. Last month, China was accused of firing water cannons at Filipino fishermen, although it insists it was defending its maritime interests. Up to 600 migrants have been rescued from four boats off the coast of Indonesia's Aceh province. They were taken from the overcrowded vessels, which had run out of fuel and had to be towed to shore by fishermen. Some of the boats had been abandoned by the captains and smugglers. Officials were quoted as saying they were mainly Muslims from Myanmar and Bangladeshis. Some said they had spent up to two months at sea. Hundreds of people were forced to flee their homes in the western part of the U.S. state of South Dakota after a tornado struck, injuring nine people and destroying more than 20 buildings. Utilities crews were assessing the damage as water and power supplies were cut. A no travel warning is in force because of heavy snow. Meanwhile in Texas, which saw heavy rain over the weekend, six people had to be rescued from their homes by helicopter. They were stranded after floods swept away cars and washed out roads, and they couldn't be reached by rescue vehicles. Arthur Ricciola, 